in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate um, how to use uh, the ray tracing and path tracing features from Notch uh, in conjunction with a simple particle system. So the first thing I'm going to do is build a little particle system to work with. Um, I'm going to do this from scratch, but I'm going to use um, some particles that follow the path of a spline. So let's make a, um, so I'm just going to make a spline node. Spline, let's just drag in the spline and hit, we can link that to the root. And then, so a spline and notch is built out of nulls. So if you use geometry nulls, one, then if I drag that out, show the spline. If I add a couple more, you can see that the spline is just built out of nulls. I'm going to do a really simple spline here. So um, with splines and notch, uh, the nulls are the control points, and the uh, the way that the tangents and so on the spread is controlled by the scale. So if I push the scale out in Z, it smooths out the shape of the spline. And you can um, easily, you just need to move those a little bit around so they're pointing the right way. I should not mind a bit of bend on this. We could probably make it more interesting anyway. Let's loop it around so they kind of spin. I'm going to just rotate the one in the middle. In the bank. There we go. So let's put some particles on that and see how it looks. So I'm just going to make a particle root node. Back that in, link it to the root. And then we're going to use a spline emitter. Use a spline emitter, link that to the, if you hit control R, it'll automatically link it to the particle root. And I can just whack my uh, spline into the spline input on the spline emitter. It kind of makes sense to know what I'm doing. So I'm going to stick a point renderer on here for now. The point renderer will just be used to visualize the particles as I'm working. And you see that already, I just by doing this, I get a load of particles emitted on my spline. What I actually wanted them to do is to flow along the spline. So I'm just going to give them a little bit of a reduced time here. Whack it on it. So let's see. There we go. And let's make it that it follows the spline. There we go. Well, that's very, very fast and excessive, isn't it? Let's make that a bit more uh, gentle, like so. And let's... Um, randomize their offsets so they're not all kind of in the same place and let's give them a bit of um let's try to make them emit a little bit slower because it's kind of crazy at the moment and let's make them life last a little bit longer as well generally move slower and generally be more graceful let's just uh change the emission rate as well so now we've got a more uh, more reasonable emission so that's working, but it's kind of a bit dull. So I'm going to also add in some um, a little bit of turbulence using curl noise effector. Just whack a curl noise fluid effector in, hit Control R, so it's linked to the root. And that's kind of made them go uh, wibbly, which is not my intention. So let's drop the noise size down. I'll make that a little bit more graceful. And let's whack the radius up. And I think we need a little bit more a bit, less, a bit more longer life on those particles, so they will live long, live long enough. And uh, let's make them twist a little bit as well. So use a vortex effector, and then if you look at the vortex, that's completely the wrong axis. So let's just give it a bit of a rotation, stick it 90 degrees, and obviously make that really, really minimal. It's just giving it a little bit of a twist as it goes along the length of the spline. And I think actually we have way too many particles here. It's um, it's not going to be that easy to work with. So first thing I'm going to add a camera. I'm going to lock. I'm going to lock off my camera view. So I'm just going to set a camera position, and then that and that will do. And let's make sure those splines are in reasonable place. So let's just lock off a camera point of view like so. I think we can stretch that null a bit further. Probably 
put it down a bit as well. So now I've, I think let's take this particle count right down. We've got 64,000 particles at the moment. I'm going to cut that down to 2,000. Particles are much more discernible now. So the point renderer here is really just for visualization. So is the spline actually, so let's turn that off. The point render is really just for visualization. What I actually want is to make these into little spheres. So to do that, I'm going to use a clone to particles node, which I can link to the root. And then that takes a particle root node as input. And then we just need something to clone. So I'm gonna drop in a shape 3D, link it to the root. And you can see now I've got a small number of particles. The part, the clone to particles node has a count on it. Um, because we've got 2,000 particles, we need 2,000 clones to map all of them. And yeah, they're really, really big. So let's drop a scale down as well. I think actually given the number of, um, given the size of them on the screen, I don't think we need quite as many subdivisions either. See now, you see we've got a bunch of spheres instead. So let's get rid of that point renderer now. He's gone. The, um, all the clones are the same size, so why not give them some randomness? Just give them some variation. And this starts to look like something. So the next thing, we've got one sphere, we've got a nice uh, lots of spheres being cloned to our particles, moving into roughly the right shape. So let's now try and light this scene. So I'm gonna go into the root node, and look, so I'm gonna set up lighting, I'm gonna turn on deferred rendering, high dynamic range, and linear space. And you'll see that, yeah, everything's disappeared. This, it's all black. So I need to get some lights in that scene. So I'm gonna use an area light to light this. Let's put it on um, physical fall off and link it to the root. And instantly you can see I've got a bit of a scene going on now. You can just kind of see what I'm doing. There we go. So let's put one light over to the side here. Let's boost that brightness. I'm gonna just bump that to the side down. That's my one, that's my first key light. And let's have another one. So let's copy that. Link to the root. Let's, let's put that one behind. So it's gonna do a backlight and let's make it super wide as well. So a nice big wide area light that can light from the top. Kind of give them us give them us a bit of a sort of background fill. That's working great. Let's just pump that brightness up as well. You see as I'm holding Alt, it means the slider isn't limited, so you can keep dragging past it. This is working nicely, but uh, let's put some really vague. I'm gonna keep this scene quite monochrome, but just give them a little bit of tint. So this is working well. I can clearly see the lighting effects from the uh, area light on the scene but I would like to actually get some shadows to get some definition in here. So in order to get shadows from area lights, I need to turn on ray tracing. And this is as simple as going into the root node and checking ray tracing enabled. And I can go to my two area lights, which I've selected both, click on ray traced, and there we go. Ray traced area light shadows is just tectal. So now um, you can very clearly see. So as I play, you can see it's noisy, but it's working. Give a bit more strength to that first area light, shall we? You can see that's working well. It's noisy at first, but when you stop, it quickly refines because that's um, because ray tracing um, it needs to refine. You can only do a certain number of rays per frame. So in order to get enough rays to get a good ray trace result, just do it over lots of frames and refine it. You can see the refine steps there in the bottom corner. And if you want to turn off refining, just hit Control Shift R. And now the image is always noisy, but not what you want. If we're working sometimes. And there's also, if I want to completely turn off ray tracing, I mean, this is actually running really well. It's really fast, but if I, if I wanted to work at even higher frame rates, I could just click off ray tracing completely. And now you know, there's almost no GPU times being used at all. So now I can work at a really high frame rate if I want to do some editing of the original sim. Let's turn that back on. And uh, so at the moment I've just got one um, one ball 
being duplicated for all the particles and with area lights. Uh, this is fine, but let's actually try and get some more interesting lighting in here. Um, to get more interesting lighting out of this, I really want to um, get the particles to start, the lighting to start bouncing off the particles, not just at the moment we've got one direct illumination pass, and I would like to get a multi-bounce look, so the particles, so we don't get these dark areas, so lights can bounce around. So to do that, I'm going to add a path tracing. So by adding the path tracing node, let's do, drag that in, Let's link that to the root with Control R, and the path tracing node uh, handles all of the direct illumination. You can see what the effect this has had already, just by adding uh, direct illumination into the scene. Um, it's had a massive effect. It's um, it, it's enabling all the light to bounce around, and uh, we're getting a much more a much better look than we were before. You can just turn that off and on. You can see what the effect that has. So if I turn off the um, this key area light. Let's light it from the back. You can see that most of the illumination here is coming from the path tracer. And this is still running, I mean, this is still running at a perfectly interactive rate. It's just a bit noisy. I can deal with that while editing. Stop and it refines. So this is now, um, we're getting something of a look now. So the path that we've got some uh, good looking uh, particle balls but I want to kind of vary the shading on those a bit. I don't just want them all to be flat white. So let's instead, let's go firstly to material. So at the moment, I'm going to keep this, um, this one relatively diffuse. I'm going to add a material node in, link it to the shape 3D. And let's just adjust the roughness a bit. So we're getting a less of a, um, so there's very little, so like smooth out the specular. So we're getting a very rough looking ball. Very diffuse -ish surface, but with a bit of specularity on them. Now, I want to I want to make not all, I don't want the balls to all look the same. I want some variation here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the ball, and link it to the clone to particles. And if I set that's set to iterate, we random iterate either. Now, I can this ball. Now we've got each of them rendered by different. Um, each particle is assigned to a different shape three D. The cloning. So I'm going to make this one metallic. So if I drop in a metallic material, link it to the shape 3D. See the half of the balls now are being rendered with this clone, which is a metallic shiny ball. And instead of uh, this, this is very very shiny and not and very smooth as well. So let's just make that rougher. So we've got more of a rough kind of look, and let's bring the speck of color down a bit. So we've got like a slightly darker, rougher ball. It's nice. I'm going to make another copy of that. I think that one is as well. And this one I'm going to make darker still, but much shinier. This is black and very shiny. And then, and you'll see if I get in super close. You see the way that the particles, everything's bouncing off each other. You can see in that shiny ball that it's reflecting multiple bounces of the um, the other nodes, the other particles. If I I'll increase the bounce count a little, you can see that um, you get increasingly more detailed bounces. And that's all done by the path tracer. So if we hide the path tracer, we're not getting any of that. Pop back on, and you can see all the all the illumination start to fill in. So I'm going to have one more copy here, and this time pop that in. And link it to the clone to particles. This one's going to be glassy. This is a glass material here. Uh, if we can find one. So the glass material will actually, um, you'll be able to see through it and see the other particles through the other side. You see some of them in action there. So it's refracting what's behind. We've got a bit of roughness control in there as well. All right, so that's mostly the look I was going for. Well, that, that, that'll take a bit of time to refine. Unfortunately, we bumped up all the uh, things that make things noisy, so it's going to take a bit longer to refine. But it'll still run interactively. We hit stop, and it'll refine. So one more thing I want to add here. So at the moment, all the balls are, um, they're all just reflective or refractive balls. I'm going to add one set of balls that are emissive. I only want a really small number of these, so I'm just going to copy the clone to particles node. And instead of having 
2,000 particles. I'm going to have like 50 and make them a little bit larger as well. And then I'm going to copy and paste that sphere. And let's add a, an emissive material instead. Link that in. And this will uh, give me a few. Let me pop that on. We need to link the particle system to the root, to the uh, clone to particles as well. So you pop that in, and now you see we've got a few particles that are actually um, emissive. Let's give them a let's give them a little bit of tint. Let's make them slightly purple, and adjust that emissiveness so they over brighten a little bit. You can see that's working well. They're just they're just having that extra touch of um, emissiveness in the system gives it a little more interest. Now, obviously, one of the nice things here is that I can go back to the simulation that I've built and just adjust it as I like. So I think we could do with having a bit more radius here. Yeah, let's make them spread a bit more like that. There we go. And let's uh, give them a little bit more turbulence as well. You see as I stop, everything just clicks in and refines. This is gonna take a bit more, a uh, few more iterations. I think we'll probably need about a few hundred iterations to make this really smooth out. What we can do is we can uh, control the iteration counts by adding an RT refinement node. Before I do that, I think it pays to try and like minimize the amount of um, bounces I'm doing. So let's see if I can cut the number of bounces and just see if how it actually affects the visual result because that's going to make it refine faster. Uh, did that have an effect? I think we need three diffuse and the rest will be good as they are. Now, so I'm going to add the RT refinement node in. So let's drop that in, hit the root. And the RT refinement node controls, um, firstly, the maximum number of fine steps. So this is set to a very large number right now. Let's set this to, say, 200. And let's also use full screen anti aliasing which works really well for still images. So now I've got my, um, that's my, 2000, my 200 refined steps. Now let's pop on the AI denoiser and see what we get. You see that does a pretty nice job. It does, there's an element of blurring here. I think without it, you lose a little bit of sharpness with the AI denoising. But the way to overcome that is to simply refine more before it kicks in. So if you go from instead of 200 to 400, so we'll get to that pretty quick. So um, by having more uh, passes before the denoiser kicks in, it gives it more to work with. But still, the advantage of having, you see how where I am with uh, with 200 passes, it's still pretty quick to refine, just a few seconds. But as soon as that denoiser kicks in, it's completely smooths it out. Uh, otherwise, I'd have to wait for thousands and thousands of iterations to get, to get the result I wanted. But I could still work with this and edit this as I want, but when I want to be done with it, let's move that camera a bit. Yeah, let's get a bit closer. Let's go for less iterations so I can work quicker. And there you have it. So that demonstrates how easy it is to take, uh, use the existing particle and clone tools in Notch, but now combined with um, some much more advanced rendering features like path tracing to give you a really great look to your scenes. Thank you.